So let's, ah, oh. you see, now the camera loves me. You see, before it was, you see, before the camera did not love me. And if I go like this, then it will come to you. So that's even better. Okay. Let's see, this is not going to work. That's going to be Okay. So should we talk in a manner that will make people trust us with their lives yeah. and cases? This is very okay. serious. This is very serious. Okay. So today we're going to be talking about what happens if you've been injured on the job and you have a pre-existing condition uh, or a pre-existing injury. And that can uh, obviously um, affect your, uh, your rights and your benefits. And uh, let's face it, you will be asked this question. You will be asked so many times, six ways till Sunday, have you had any other problems? Have you had similar problems, etc.? A lot of times they won't define what problems means, right? Uh, doctors could say, well, have you had any problems with your back before? And you're like, well, uh, no, I haven't. And you're thinking about it because you've never lost work. You've never gotten any money for any back injury, blah, blah, blah. But sure, you've gone to the doctor repeatedly for, you know, every three months for six years complaining of back pain. Well, guess what? Problems means have you gone to see any medical provider who writes anything down about your condition or your complaints? That's what it means, period. And so um, it's a huge issue. Um, and there are ways to handle it and there are ways that don't. And Rhonda and I have two cases, both with the same employer as it would turn out. And one client did it one way and the other client did it the other way. So before we go into what your client did, my client had not only treatment, but also had surgery for his back, had taken time off work for his back, and then maybe a year later gets into another accident or gets into an injury at work he's asked first thing when he fills out the report of injury have you had prior problems he says yes i had you know i had surgery and blah 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 puts it down he goes and sees the doctor um the workers compensation doctor and he's asked have you had any yes i had blah 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 you know and he lists he lists it out okay um he won his case. Um, there was no question in terms of his credibility, believability. He was able to say, yes, I did. However, um, I, for the last nine months, I didn't have to go back to the doctor. I never missed work. I was able to do everything. They released me full duty, full restriction, you know, no restrictions, and I could do everything. And it really wasn't an issue. So what happened with you? Okay. <laughs> so my client, when he was asked about prior injuries, denied ever having an injury to his back. And the problem was his injury was clear back in 2008. So it was like 10 years ago. So 10 years ago. And he felt like he had completely recovered and had gone on to do many other heavy, um, heavy, uh, heavy requirement jobs, right. um, categories, physically demanding, physically demanding um, he had passed a physical exam. Um, so when the adjuster was had asking never gone him, back to had, do had doctor never for, gone 10 back years. for 10 years. Um, and the problem was again, when he's being asked at the time he's reporting a new injury, he denies ever having had a back injury. And unfortunately in his case, he did have an impairment rating that was given. So he got so money he for got it. Money for it. Plus surgery. Plus no, no, he hadn't surgery. had surgery. Okay. He All didn't right. have but surgery. No, but money. But money and um, had permanent work restrictions. Right. So, which, now, granted, which they were really away. old. Right. But they hadn't gone away. I mean, he had not, because he hadn't seen a doctor, no one had readdressed the situation. So, he hadn't tried to you know have him but, removed but he could have said listen i got better and i've been through all these physical examinations yeah. and i've been doing a job that made me lift 50 yeah. pounds or right. more and right. who cares what the doctor said in 2008 that i only had, could only lift 20 pounds right. i've been able to lift 50 for the last five years no problem yeah. and it would have been okay correct yeah, I mean, again, had he said, and I, but I had this prior injury. Right. The problem was the failure to admit at all that there was ever that injury um, right. on a number of occasions. It's not even just once. Right. So failure to report it at the time he's reporting a new injury, 
failure to tell the insurance company, failure to tell any of the medical providers um, that how well he had he was doing. And so that's all he would have needed to do was basically be very upfront mm -hmm. and they could have dealt with the fact that yes, we have a situation here where you're completely good. And instead what happened is the unfortunately the administrative law judge decided because he couldn't be honest and the insurance company i mean the um, first the insurance this well profit. first the insurance company but then ultimately the judge decided because he wasn't honest about that that it put into question his whole claim he had a very legitimate claim outside yeah, of that but absolutely. that was the problem and and so oftentimes you'll think well i you know i, I didn't remember or i forgot or whatever and i'm going to just let you know uh, very quickly, it will it will be argued not you're forgetful, but you are a liar. And and if you lie about that thing, then everything else you say is is a lie. And so we really strongly advise our clients and all injured workers to be completely upfront about their prior medical condition because what really matters. What we really are looking for, if we're looking at a prior condition that you had, is in the year before your injury, how many times were you off work because of this? In the year before the injury, how many doctor's appointments were there for this condition? In the year before the injury, was your medication, you know, were you taking medicines, et cetera? In the year before, were you limiting what you could do because of this injury? And if all those answers are kind of no, and even if those answers are yes, the workers' compensation carrier is responsible to get you back to your baseline pre-injury. And so, for example, if you had a bad back and you're going to see a chiropractor once every month and now the injuries occurred and now you have to see a doctor every week, they need to get you better so that you're back to just seeing a chiropractor once a month. And right. it doesn't it doesn't mean that you don't get benefits, doesn't mean you get injured, but they only want you to they they want to know what your baseline was and if you lie about it it's going to destroy your case and your credibility yes so as always uh if you or someone you know has been injured on the job in colorado or they've uh, been injured elsewhere but they they were hired in colorado please have them call us at 970-356-9898 Rhonda and I have between us more than 50 years of experience <laughs> doing this. This means we're really good <laughs> at helping injured workers, but we're very boring at parties. Um, <laughs> right? For yourself. Yeah, oh. I've worn a, a lampshade or two <laughs> in my time. <laughs> so have a great weekend, and we look forward to helping you. Bye. <laughs>